Well, hello, and welcome to Fun With Guns. I'm Captain Max, and today we're talking about Hollywood tough guys that carry a 1911. When I did my research for this subject, I found out that there were about seven Hollywood television characters that were identified for carrying the Colt 1911 45 automatic. And when I first started working on this project, I just thought that they carried the gun to sort of set them apart from other characters, the police with the revolvers and so on and so forth. But as I put this together, I found out something interesting. Virtually all of the characters shared a very common thread. All of them were combat veterans, and most of them had done their service in Asia. Now we're not going to be talking about movies here, we're going to be talking about television characters where the 1911 was sort of a quasi partner to the character and sort of helped to identify them throughout the run of the show. The first character is Mike Hammer, the private detective. Now Mike Hammer was based on a series of stories written by Mickey Spillane and Spillane actually played Mike Hammer in the 1963 movie. Then there was a television series that starred Darren McGavin and of course the 1911 was his friend, although he did sometimes use other guns such as a pocket automatic or a revolver. Later on in the 1980s, a television series with Stacy Keach was done and he was closely identified with carrying the 1911. It not only set him apart, but also to establish his bona fides as sort of a traditional American. In fact, by the time Stacy Keach played Mike Hammer, he was a bit of an anachronism, still walking around dressed like it was the 1940s and wearing a hat. Mickey Spillaney had written the character originally to be a PI that went after conventional bad guys, but eventually he became a symbol of anti-communism, and there was nothing more American than the good old cult government model. As a result, it was a common thread through all of the characters that played Mike Hammer to carry a 1911. There was another television show that starred Ken Howard called The Manhunter. It was a fairly short-lived series about a World War I doughboy, highly decorated, who came back from the war and became a bounty hunter. Now, although he used the 1911, he also used long guns, shotguns, and lever action rifles. This sidearm not only differentiated him from the local law enforcement, but also continually helped to reestablish his bona fides as a true war veteran from the trenches. Next in our series was a television show, Crime Story. This starred Dennis Farina as MCU, or Major Crime Unit Detective, Mike Torello of the Chicago Police Department. Now, Torello still carried a standard issue Department 38, but he also carried a 1911. And this actually made sense for a couple of reasons. One, Torello was a Korean War veteran, highly decorated. This was pointed out a couple of times in the show. In fact, you'll notice some of his officers carrying a variety of Korean War era guns, such as an M1 carbine. But they never lose their grounding as a civilian law enforcement agency. Most of them still carry their Police 38 specials, and one detective carries an early model 357 Magnum. But given that the bad guys Torello often faced were very well armed, he knew he had to upgun. In fact, even the bad guys carried 45 automatics. In this one scene, Polly Tagli is making a bomb when his boss walks in on him, and of course he grabs his 45 and points it at him. Polly was certainly no war hero or military veteran, but he did know that the 45 was an effective gun. Having such heavily armed bad guys meant that the police had to upgun to match them, and of course, Torello trusted his life to the 45 automatic. One character who is not only identified with the 45 automatic, but in particularly the GI model 45 automatic, was Tom Selleck's character, Magnum P.I. Magnum was a Navy SEAL who'd come back from fighting in Vietnam, and he used what one can only suppose was his old service automatic. Unlike some characters in television shows that carry 1911's Magnum was not modified in any way, it looked like a straight up military model. Although Magnum was a private detective, one of the things they pointed out was he did not actually have a permit to carry a gun. When he did, he did so at his own peril, and it was only through his connections in the police department that he didn't get in a lot of trouble for it. The television show made sure that Magnum kept a, this small number of guns that he used, and only two of which were his. By only using the 1911 and on occasion the PPK, the show kept a certain continuity to it. Very believable, given that Magnum really didn't have much money for buying other guns, and the fact that where he lived in Hawaii, obtaining other guns was an extremely difficult and expensive process. An interesting side note, Tom Selleck's 45 automatic from the television show is now in the National Firearms Museum, and because of the type of blanks they had to use in the show, his 1911 prop gun is actually a 9mm. Side note, 
When he played Jesse Stone in the television series Stone Cold, Selleck once again carried a 1911. In the same universe as Magnum P.I. was a television show Simon and Simon about two brothers, Rick and A.J. Simon. In the first season, each of them had a 45 automatic. In fact, the opening credits showed A.J. trying to hide the magazine of the gun while he was attempting to load it. It was primarily Rick that carried the 45 automatic, and at one point he actually had a nickel 45 automatic. But as the show progressed, he switched over to a Smith & Wesson Model 2944 Magnum, and his brother started carrying a Smith & Wesson, and those became their standard guns. But, for the first season, they were 45 men. The next television show was the TV show Bones, and David Bornez, and I apologize if I'm butchering his name, played FBI agent Seely Booth, who carried a highly customized 45 automatic 1911 pattern gun. His character had been a sniper in the U.S. Army, and had served in the Middle East, which is, of course, again, part of Asia. In some episodes, his co-star, who would later become his television wife, also occasionally used the 1911 or other very large handguns. The last Hollywood tough guy to carry the 1911 is one I've talked about before in this series, and that's Dean Winchester, the TV show Supernatural. Now, although Dean has not been in the military, his father, whom he greatly emulates, was a Vietnam veteran. Dean dresses the same, carries the same kind of gun, and even listens to the same music. Heck, he even still drives his father's old car. For most of the run of the show, Dean, played by actor Jensen Ackles, has carried a 1911A1 that's been nickel plated and engraved. It has white grips with the silver medallions. Personally, I find this the most attractive of all of the guns, and if I could have one, that'd be mine. There is one more TV show that had Rod Taylor and Dennis Cole, short-lived, called The Bearcats. Taking place in around 1914, just before the U.S. entry into World War I, it was an interesting kind of western because it had cars and airplanes. But they also carried 45 automatics because those guys had the latest of everything. It was an interesting concept for a show. When I first set out to do this video, I simply thought the writers and the directors were giving their characters the 45 automatic to show that they were big and tough and that they were manly men and were pro-American. But then I realized it was more than just that. The 1911 has, in fact, become a symbol of America itself. The standard military sidearm for nearly eight decades, it fought in two world wars and virtually every conflict against communism. By giving your detective or your policeman or your character in general the 1911, you basically say, he's an American. I'm Max with Fun With Guns. Guys, take care and be safe.